Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach, and welcome to my vlog, where it's my mission to highlight my creative journey and extract the various lessons that I'm learning as I face obstacles, as well as the strategies that I apply when I face those obstacles. I mean, that's ultimately why I call myself a 360 Creative Coach is because I like to take these challenges and there's, there's both tactics, but there's also a mindset. So that completes the, uh, the, the circle for any creative. Now, before I get into the crux of this episode, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you aren't already. That way you get all the various content that I put out right when I put it out. Thank you if you just did. So let's dive into it. One of the things, well, first off, I should start here. I, I am amazed at how happy and the amount of energy that I have because for all intents and purposes, last week was a heavy week for a number of different things. Certainly Kenosha, certainly the hurricane, certainly the fires in California, it, uh, kind of various things politically and culminated to kind of, I know like in the grand scheme of things, uh, you know, it's like, well, what does it ultimately mean? But like Chad Bozeman, you know, his death and his passing certainly meant something, at least it did to me. And so kind of all that stuff compiled together really was taxing. But I'm gonna talk about that sort of towards the end, especially of how it's really about intention and how we process things. So, you know, that's a little bit of a tease, I know. But nonetheless, I just want you to know, like it is, it is kind of almost miraculous in some sense that I am this calm and this happy to, kind of, to be speaking to you. Now, granted, I'm always very happy to speak to you, but sometimes my energy can be lower, admittedly, because of everything that's going on. I try to hide it, but now, uh, luckily, there's nothing to hide. It, I'm just straight happy. And I think one of the things, there's a, there's a number of things that, that go into it that really help with this, but getting back into gardening. So, and when I, I mean, I've talked about gardening in the past, but I... I had a, a second failed crop of plants that, you know, they were, they were sprouting and then they, they wilted, they died. And I was getting to, should I just give up? Like, what's the point in this? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, through the encouragement of my friends, like, no, just keep going, whatever else. And so number one, gardening in general, right? Even if I was successful with the prior iterations is very much about patience, right? It has to teach you patience and all that stuff. And there's a second aspect to it where, you know, if I'm on here talking pretty much every single week with every single episode that I basically do about overcoming obstacles and also facing challenges and, and the fact that none of us are born with X, Y, and Z knowledge that we all have to learn and get and, and put in the time to get better, well, then I have to do the same towards gardening, right? It's no different. And so I just wanted to kind of share that. So I did... I, I redid things and I, this is now my third attempt and I'm going to go with things about it a little bit differently. I've, you know, re-educated myself even further on things. And so hopefully it goes well, if not, then I'll just keep, keep on trying till I do, because, you know, this is one of those things that truly is about the process and the lessons learned more so than I guess the end result. Although I do want an end result with vegetables that I can eat. Speaking of the, the, the process, last week, as far as the writing of my script, really concerned itself with the writing of kind of this nightmarish sequence. And all in all, it, I think it ended up being around seven or eight pages out of the script, which is a significant amount. But it literally took all week to write. And, you know, because I'm working through the various things, uh, it's a very action heavy. There's a lot of things that are happening, coming in, blah, blah, blah. And the things that are said are also very specific. So it's not like a straight dialogue that it has to be very key dialogue. And, and so in that sense, right, I, I am applying patience. And it, it, it speaks to 
the idea that it is a process, that it is a journey. And so even though result is only eight pages, and by the way, I, I kind of announced, I think last week, that I wanted to essentially finish out the, the first draft of the script before the end of August. Well, today's the last day of August. I'm going to add a few more pages, but that'll, I mean, realistically at most, I'll get to 60 pages, which is about 60 minutes worth of the movie. I don't know how long ultimately the movie's going to be, an hour and a half, two hours. I don't know, but certainly, you know, I'm not going to finish the movie tonight, uh, but that's not unfortunate, right? I'm not saying that as like, oh, I did, I failed a deadline. No, I, the, the things that came out of me writing that sequence, I think, sparked a lot of good ideas that will then only enhance the totality of the ending. And I'm really excited by that. And I legitimately was writing every single day on this script. And, you know, even if I just got like two pages out, right? I think, I mean, ultimately that's probably what it comes out to, uh, give or take. But, you know, it was encouraging. And by the way, I didn't just do the dream sequence. I, I, I did a couple of pages after that as well. So that was exciting. Um, but overall, the majority of the week was the, the nightmare sequence. And so just getting that done was really gratifying. And so I'm very pleased with the progress that I did make because not only does it set up things towards the end and how the, the climax can work out, but it sets up key imagery. It sets up sort of some of the rules of, of the narrative that, that I hadn't identified earlier because I didn't need to necessarily. And now, you know, having put having needed to put pen to paper, so to speak, I, I established a couple of things visually that needed to be established. So, so it was exciting to, to work through that and whatever else. And, and I think, you know, it's one of those things I look at a lot of my quote unquote writer friends and some of them literally just write like at best once every four months, you know, like on a weekend and they're never going to make that progress. And even though, I mean, first off, the fact that, like, ultimately, I think I cranked out 11 pages, and cranked out is probably the, the wrong word, but that's 11 more pages that I didn't have, and I know that overall, like, they're not perfect, but they're, they, 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 they show semblance of good thought and can be sculpted towards that, whereas if, if you take, if you do a start-stop with any creative project, you lose that momentum and it, and it does show and you will have a harder time creating the product. I've seen it time and time again, Stephen Pressfield through books such as Do the Work, The War of Art and so on talks about this ad nauseum as do other creatives. So really, really take that to heart because you know I know it's intimidating. It's like you're sitting at a computer and I was talking with my friend uh, just a day or two ago and you know, she is talking about how writing has been therapeutic for her and she's doing a lot more of it, but there are days when she's sitting in front of the computer screen and it's tough for her. And so I told, I gave her some ideas, which I've shared numerous times with you on how to overcome that. You know, one of my best ones is, well, it's intimidating to stare at a blank page. So instead try and dictate even to your phone, just, just dictate. And it's going to change heavily because the way we speak is vastly different than the way we, we should write. But nonetheless, at least they'll give you a jumping off point to then amend it. And so she really, and she's like, okay, that's, that's really good. That's exciting. And so I haven't needed to do that with this, but there are times like when I do walk my dogs and so forth, where I'm constantly thinking. And when an idea pops in, I, I dictate it into my phone so I don't forget it. So that's been really cool. A big victory last week was the completion if you will, of my query letter. So I've been kind of uh, enhancing it, if you will. And, you know, my, my editor, Emily, and I, we, one of the things in particular that we were molding and took until just literally today to really finesse was the summary. You know, uh, when, you, when you send out a query letter to literary agents, the summary in itself 
is pretty much like the uh, almost like the blurb that you would read at the end on, on the back cover of a book. And most times it actually turns out to be one and the same. And so it has to really hook. And so, you know, that was something that we were finessing with. And, you know, her and I managed to punch up the summary that I had. And then, but there was the, this last thing that, that the, the last sentence was kind of a cliche. And so I said, okay, why don't, let me take another stab at this. Let me kind of look at it from a different lens and not look at what's there. And so I, I consulted with another friend of mine, Jason, and I said, like, you know, how would you approach this, you know, from, from scratch? And so we redid an alternative version of that. And, you know, it was one of those things like, for me, I, I was like, okay, well, this is, this is good. It's, but is it, is it just different or is it better? And she was able to confirm. She's like, no, this is so much more lively and it, it, shows your voice and so forth. I was like, really? And, and I don't know, it, it, was, it was tough for me to recognize that within the writing, but I'm glad it's there and that it was evident. Uh, be, and, you know, a large part of that was also just the, even the, the full letter itself. She nudged me towards that to, to show my voice a lot more. And I, and I, saw, I, I saw evidence of that when I did redo it based on her direction there, but I couldn't tell the difference really based on the two summaries that were created and the fact that she felt like the alternative one was truly better. I'm like, okay, great. You know, I, I she's someone whose opinion I trust. Obviously I also trust Jason. And so, uh, you know, he is a writer as well. And so the fact that, that that's the consensus we got to is really fantastic. And I'm glad that, that it worked out. And I think I have a wonderful, wonderful summary now. If you want to learn more about the book, I'll include a link in the description. You, you can, it's basically on my website, but, um, but I'll, I'll link directly to it in the description box. Too. So you can just get to it directly and learn more about what the hell I'm actually writing or have been writing now. It's complete and it just needs to be published. Speaking of getting it published, you know, I will send out query letters, uh, throughout the week, uh, like all things, you know, I look at it almost like a job application where I have to be very meticulous. Uh, you know, the, the, the bulk of the query letter is generally about the same, but the top part is really the connection to who you're sending it to. And you want to make sure that connection is well established. Like why the hell am I sending this to you? You know, of course, like, yeah, I want you to publish my book, but it's like, okay, well, why do you want to publish my book? Right? So I have to identify that. And so, that's what I'm going to be working on. And, you know, no different than my strategy for job applications. To me, it's about quality over quantity. I'd much rather send three amazing query letters this week than send a hundred terrible ones, you know, that are generic because those will get tossed to the side. So that's what I'm going to spend this week. And also exciting. If you are a writer, uh, pit mad, Hashtag PitMat is happening this Thursday. And it's basically a, via Twitter, you pitch your book and there's a chance that someone might pick it up, right? That's kind of the long and short of it. I would encourage you to look it up. Uh, I'll include a link to that so you can read more about it and how it all works. But I'm excited. To, it's my first time participating. So I'm looking forward to it. And... Uh, you know, hopefully good results come. If not, that's okay. Uh, it, it'll just be fun to participate and gain that experience. So that way I can share it with you and, you know, learn from it for the future for myself and hopefully for you as well. So that's exciting. Uh, my editor, Emily, she will also be participating. So excited to have her be in the ring. And it's one of those things like, I, I think we need to realize just because other people are doing amazing things, that doesn't diminish your light. In fact, I think we can all elevate each other in that sense. And so, you know, I want her to achieve as much success as I want to achieve for myself, as much as I want you to achieve success, right? I, your success doesn't diminish me. I find that ex exciting. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I will let you know how that goes. 
next vlog. Also, just as a quick update, I guess the trailer for my movie, Idol, is it's in sound design, sound mix. So hopefully I'll have the completed version soon. Um, Edgar, who I did an interview with because he did the sound design slash mix for Idol, the movie, um, hence why he's doing this. Um, he's very meticulous. He's very good at what he does. And so I'm looking forward to what he brings to the table with the, with the sound for the trailer. So exciting stuff and you'll get to see the result and I'll talk about it obviously as well. Uh, the other thing that I'm, you know, I, I wanted to really focus on just the main things and really limit it to just, just like almost like just the script and the query letter last week. But as kind of the week went on, I found myself that I, early on, I had a little bit more time because, you know, realistically, I can only write at most for like three hours. So even if I did three hours of, a, of the script a day, you know, I still have other time to fill. And so, you know, I could, I could write other stuff, but I can't write the same stuff beyond like three hours. I don't know. It's just not my thing. Um, maybe that's a self-limiting belief, but, you know, I'll get better, I'm sure. Anyway, regardless, the, the idea is that I utilize that time to dictate a quick chapter of how I made Idol, which, you know, I'm taking my experience of how I made Idol and writing essentially a book similar to Rebel Without a Crew. Rebel Without a Crew is Robert Rodriguez's book chronicling how he made El Mariachi for only $7,000 and then became a Hollywood player. Now, I claim to be, not be a Hollywood player, um, certainly not in the filmmaking sense at least, but what the book does aim to do is show you that, you know, if you're someone like me that has, has a dream of making a movie or creating art, then take the shackles off and just go for it and you can do it. It uh, obviously would be great to have, you know, half a million dollars, a million dollars to do whatever you want or more, right? But nonetheless, there is a way for you to create the art that you want. It speaks to a larger point that I want to talk about in going back to the idea that, uh, that at the top I said it's almost like a miracle that I am this upbeat based on what happened last week. One of the things that really beat me to a pulp, if you will, was that a lot of people were pointing out problems but not creating solutions. And I think that's that's evident in a lot of places. And that can, I'm sure you've seen that in your life. I'm sure maybe, like, I know I, I suffer from it personally. Like, there's times where in, when I catch myself, like, I'm just constantly complaining and I haven't come up with a single solution. So sometimes we fall into that trap ourselves. So how can other people not fall into it, right? We, you know, we, we, we are not mightier than anyone else. Or at least I certainly am not. I mean, hopefully, maybe you are. <laughs> which, in which case, I bow to you. I, I sincerely do. I think that's a tall order. But, yeah, I was, just, I was just seeing a lot in all these directions. And, and it really almost kind of culminated when my friend, Abby K. Williams, she's, she's a former lawyer to put it lightly, who's now an incredible host, has done Fox News, now does Revolt, is collaborating with Essence on various things. And, you know, the thing that right now she's hosting that she's known for in this moment is Black News on Revolt. And she was interviewing a, a congressional uh, candidate from Delaware. And you know, there was, a, and she's a Republican, and there was a question of like, okay, you, you keep saying that, that Democrats and Democratic cities have not elevated black lives. What has the Republican Party done? And give me, you know, can you give me an example of a Republican-led city that has made the black life experience better? And the person literally said, oh, that's a really good question. I don't, I, I haven't looked into that. Like, pretty much verbatim. I was shocked by that because it's not a gotcha type of question. It's one that you would expect to be asked that uh, I would imagine anyone critically thinking about anything would ask and would want to know. I certainly as an audience member want to know and I appreciate Ebony going there. And there was nothing. And so, and I'm not saying this in the sense like Republicans have nothing to say because first off, this is just, you know, one person. So it's not indicative of every Republican. 
And certainly, even if it was, you, you know, there's, there's Democrats who sometimes say things without substance. And that's my point. Ultimately, like, I, I just want an elevated discussion on both sides. I think too often times it, we go for the, the easy kind of take someone down approach versus like, okay, let's really talk about an idea, whether it is social injustice, whether it is, you know, violence in America, crime and so forth. And certainly we can talk about any other issues, global warming and the economy, the response to Corona, all that stuff, right? There's a number of issues, but just people complain too much in my opinion. And in fact, you know, not to call out, <coughs> excuse me, my friends, but there's some who, who all they do is complain, 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 complain. And I almost say to them like, hey, just write a book of complaints. Because at least then you're creating an asset. Like it might not be the solution, but at least you're doing something with that energy. Like I've talked about this in the past, right? When you complain, it shows you're stuck. And I understand it. Like a lot of us are stuck in 2020, mentally, physically, whatever else, right? I, I get it. But you have to recognize that, that you are stuck and and so if nothing else, like my suggestion of like write a book of complaints, at least it, it, it's creating a different action and the solution may never come, but at least you're doing something different. And the, the bigger thing I also have for my creative friends and for you is create assets. Like more people need to start creating assets. Pure and simple. I really believe that. That can be a book, that can be, you know, a novel, that can be that can be anything, any, you know, and, you know, ironically, I talk about serendipity. Uh, I saw, I saw this kind, kind of short film, film festival, it was sort of invented, and it just kind of came across, and it's like, okay, there's, there are a dime a dozen, but it happened to come across me, you know, and I saw it, and I was just like, you know what, this, this could be something fun. And so I, I texted my friends, Courtney and Khalil, who are both filmmakers. And I said like, hey, you know, like if, if you have ideas, let's, let's do it. You know, it could be, it, it could, I have some ideas. I think they're a little bit extracted and I don't know if we could pull it off in the context of this is asking. But, um, but if nothing else, if you guys are willing, we could go for that. But certainly, if you guys have ideas, let's do it. And Courtney, she jokingly kind of pumped out this idea just based on her reaction. It was almost like a, a, a stream of consciousness type of journaling, if you will, via text. And I knew, I, I knew when I saw it, it was, it was joking. But as I read it, I'm like, this is brilliant. This truly is brilliant. And so I called her and I said, like, I know, I know you sarcastically meant it. But there's something here. And so she's developing the idea. She's contemplating the idea. And I don't want to put too much pressure on her, which I sometimes have a tendency to do, or at least I did in the past. So I want to give her some space to really think about it because it's a story, you know, it's her idea and it's a story that only she can really tell. Uh, it would certainly be disingenuous for me to write it or even like Khalil to write it. But nonetheless, you know, I am supporting with her. And, and once, once I kind of chatted with her, she did see the merits of the idea. Uh, the, we, the gears got turning. And so I'm excited that she's excited and I'm excited to hopefully help her nurture this idea to the forefront. But, but in that sense, I think, you know, it, it, it was serendipitous. I'm, you know, I, I give her a tremendous amount of credit for having come up with it. But we all sort of create, but just, just you know, there, there's a lot of things in this, right? So we're all filmmaker friends. And so by us just kind of being always in proximity to each other, not physically, literally, but, but you know, spiritually and via text and phone calls, we're always chatting. So we're always on that sort of same wavelength. And then I saw this and we kind of chatted about it. And then boom, she texted this. And then, you know, I recognized that it was great. And also Khalil, I should mention, you know, I can't take full credit. He was blown by the idea. So 
you know, it's just recognizing things and just going forward with them and not stop discouraging things and whatever else. And, you know, looking like looking for a solution is part of a bigger thing. Like just, just create, right? When I say create assets, it's just, it just means do something and stop just throwing shit at the wall. Um, me, meaning as complaints, right? Because that does no one any good. And unfortunately, it just felt like, you know, throughout the week, a lot of, you know, some of it was outside of anyone's control. You know, you can't control the hurricane. So that was, that was tough. Um, but, you know, in that sense, yeah, you can't control certain things. Chadwick Boseman couldn't control that he got colon cancer, but he could control how he reacted to it. And the fact that he created so much in the time and he always had a positive spirit. You know, it's one of those things we, we, we all ask to be strong, courageous, or whatever adjective that you want to throw for yourself. But we aren't just these things. We display those things through action. So certainly Chadwick Boseman displayed strength and courage. Be, you know, he didn't choose the circumstance, but he rose to the occasion and he was not going to let it stop him from from displaying his purpose, his greatness. And, and I think that's the message we all have to really take away from that tragedy. You know, really, really sad. But, but as I say about all of 2020, these things are tragic that are happening in the world. Economically, you know, people dying and things of that nature. But what, would, what will be worse, for me at least, is all of this is for nothing. We have to take something away from this experience. We do. So, so yeah. Um, and I think in that sense, you know, as, t- as, as, as tough as these times are, like Chadwick is a reminder to that, that we can face bad shit in our life and still choose to be upbeat about it. This year has not been easy. It hasn't been easy for me. And I'm one of the luckier few, I'm willing to admit, you know, I, I, there's, I, I'm very blessed even in this time. So people, there are people in this world that are not close to as blessed as me. <clears throat> so I can only imagine what the hardships have been for them. And yet, you know, Chadwick is a reminder of this. Victor Frankl, I thought about this today. Victor Frankl is a Holocaust survivor. He's a psychologist now who wrote the book, Man's Search for Meaning. And what it is, is his time in concentration camps and still finding purpose and meaning in spite of everything that happened. And so when you can have a person like that and you can read a book like that, like, you know, one of the, I, it's a book that I've read, but there's power in rereading a book in new context. And so in the context of 2020, I really want to reread Man's Search for Meaning because it will resonate in a different way than it did before. And one, I mean, one of the things that I do think it will have in terms of effect is it will inspire me and uplift me. Because if I was uplifted then, when I first read it, pre-pandemic, imagine how profoundly I would be moved by it now. Because it, 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 it does show evidence that, that things, that you can find purpose and meaning even in the toughest of times. If a man can find purpose in the Holocaust, he's not saying the Holocaust was a good thing. He's not saying he enjoyed it or that he wishes it upon anyone else. But what was he to do? And, you know, I think that's, that's a big point of 2020 what are we to do we don't have control over nearly as many things as we think we do so what are the things that we're going to control and one of the things for me last week you know i was getting to a place like there's just so much happening that i can't control so what can i do you know i'm someone who who's tried to protest as many times as i can and you know i've been to the big ones certainly but I, the, I've, I've been more to the smaller ones. And there was one in Woodland Hills that I used to go to. Now, 
they've kind of joined efforts with a protest in Sherman Oaks. So what I did was I biked there because biking helps me clear my head. I biked there and then I joined the protest for a few hours. And I was, you know, listen, I don't know. I certainly haven't solved systemic racism just by being out there. But at least I, it, and I don't know the ultimate effect of it, but I did something and I can feel good about that. But, and it, not that it's about me feeling good, but it's about me trying, right? It goes back to the idea. You can complain or you can do something. And so I don't know what the effect of me going down there did, but I, at the very least, I know it brightened a person's day. How do I know this? Because this amazing black woman who's there every single day from noon till God knows when, you know, she was so thankful that I joined for the few hours that I did. And I donated some money as well. And, you know, this isn't about praise for me. But, it, you know, it just I, just, I know I know the effect that had on her. And so that felt good. And I'm glad, I'm, you know, it's that thing. Like, when you do something for others, it has a profound effect on you. And I'm going to continue going as much as I can, like I have been. And... Well, see, you know, I just, I don't want to look back and say I did nothing. And, you know, I, I, I kind of talked about this I, in, in past weeks. I'm, I'm doing what I can to balance the things that I'm doing creatively along with life itself. And part of that is just there's so much inequality in life, racially, economically, and so forth, that I can't just sit back. This isn't, you know, unfortunately, it's going to do no one any good if I wear myself out. You know, the fight for all these things is going to be ongoing. And it's really a marathon, not a sprint. But I have to do what I can, you know. And, uh, you know, certainly Chadwick, just like Viktor Frankl, are reminders of that. That is possible. You know, they are beacons of hope and how to act. So that's what I have for you, you know. Um, I, I, I guess, you know, towards the end of the week, I really felt down in that sense. But man, I, I pride myself on the ability not to stay down long and I really attribute it to action. I, I just know that if I'm inactive, I'm just gonna stay in that bad place. And I just, whatever I can do to crawl out of that hole, I do. And I'm lucky enough to have tools, and that's what I try to share with you. I think, you know, creativity is great, um, and it certainly is. I mean, a lot of us that do creative work do it because it is therapeutic to us. And also it's therapeutic to other people. You know, the same way we consume art and get something out of it, we want to impart onto the world. And so I think that's wonderful. Art is not selfish. But we also, you know, have to do other things as well. You know, there's multiple tools. And you ultimately get to decide what that is for you. You know, yoga, meditation, whatever it may be. I mean, those aren't the only ones. Um, journaling, reading. You know, I did a lot of reading. Uh, I, did not, I did fiction reading. But, um, you know, fiction reading teaches you empathy. So, so I try... I'm not, listen, you know me, I'm not, if you read some of my tweets from, from the past, sometimes I'm not the best at showing empathy. I'm willing to admit that. I get reactionary, like we all do, but, um, you know, I try to catch myself as much as possible. And uh, all I can do for you is hope for the same. And so hopefully this has provided some light, some guidance, some wisdom, and some inspiration in your life uh, and you know whatever's happening in your life feel free to share the good stuff if you like so if nothing else we can do the proverbial you know cheering on I, I don't want to I want to cheer you on but conversely if there's stuff that's bad in your life you know you don't have to share all the details if you don't want to but um, right I think if nothing else I 
you know, I'm someone that's very cognizant and want to try to uplift people more and more, even if I don't share all their ideologies. And so if there's something wrong, bad in your life, you know, know that you are in my thoughts. I mean, that's ultimately why I do these various episodes that I do, not just the vlogs, but the lessons and so forth. To try to get at something that can help you. So thank you for the privilege of allowing me to talk to you. And if you think this would benefit someone in your life as well, then by all means share with them. I certainly would appreciate it. Thank you. I am humbled that you continue to check out the various content that I put out. I hope to see you.